Psalms chapter 26, a Psalm of David. And it's a great inspiration that the Holy Spirit has put this in the Bible because you know what? David was a sinner. And David loved the Lord. And we can learn, you know what? We're not perfect. But we can street, strive to be perfect. And David says, judge me. That's what everybody out in the world does. They judge us. You know, gossip, Christian, the world. They look at you and they judge. Color, dress, money, what you look like. But David says, judge me, O Lord. That's like somebody coming to you, judge not least you be judged. Well, you're not quoting the whole scripture. And David saying, Lord, judge me. And this is something that every Christian should do at least once a week. You get off all by yourself. And listen, this, this is something I do. You get off by yourself and reach out to the Lord and say, Lord, what's in my life that's not pleasing you? What sins have I not read about in my Bible this week? What have I, the preacher has not preached about me this week? What is bothering you between you and me? And most Christians will not pray or seek God because they know God will answer them. I'm going to tell you personally, and I'm not confessing my sin to you. You know, I confess it to the Lord Jesus. But for me, the Lord said, hey, patience. Lord God, what's the problem between patience? Lord, let me finish. I've even done that with the Lord, let me finish. See, patience. And when we ask God, say, God, what's the trouble? And God will answer. Sometimes he may answer immediately. He may answer you next time when you read the Bible. He may answer the next time uh, you go to church and hear the preacher preach or teach. He may get you, you know, when you're at work. That's one of your problems right there. What? Anger. Oh. You never know. But if you honestly say, Lord, judge me. And David's not crying out, Lord, send down, you know, fire bolts and send down lightning. He's saying, Lord God, where do I stand? For I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord. And Psalms 26 is David. And he's not bragging. He's not in pride. He's saying, Lord, look what I do and look what I don't do. And he's not trying to please anybody. He's not trying to get recognition. He, he's in with the Lord. He said, Lord, this is... And Lord, what I do, am I missing anything? And Lord, what I don't do, am I missing anything? Or Lord, have I deceived myself and think I'm doing something I'm not doing? Have I fooled myself and I am doing something I shouldn't be doing? And every time, you know, your testimony to God, you and God alone. Say, so God, and if there's anything wrong with what we're doing, God will, hey, you know, you're doing that, you're getting a little prideful in that. You're getting a little self in that. Get back to me. Therefore, I shall not slide. If God seriously would speak to you by seriously asking God, say, what is my trouble? And God speaks to you and you do it with a proper heart. And you're willing to obey and do right. You're not going to slide. I think James chapter 1 I'm thinking over here. I think it's James chapter 1. I think it says something just like it. James chapter 1, 1 verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, what could be wisdom? Lord God, what's the trouble in my life? Lord, I want to know what you and I have a problem. That's, what, that's the subject we're talking about in Proverbs. Let him ask of God. <laughs> God, not that, yeah. Let him ask the God that giveth to all men liberality and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. God will tell you what's wrong with you. 
if you want to know. But let him ask in faith. God, he, nothing wavering. For he that's wavering is like a wave of a sea driven with the wind and tall. He said, what's the wavering? Lord God, uh, nah, this is not me. But I'm just going to say, Lord God, you know, what's the trouble between you and I? Uh, your eyes are going off in places where they shouldn't be going. The lutz of the eyes. Let's say that's it. Well, Lord, you know, it's, well, Lord, you know, I, I, I can't help it. You know, Lord, and you start making excuses. Now you're wavering. And you start, well, you, you start, well, God, you know, allowing your sin that God has just showed you. And you do that when you go hear preacher preach and teach. And he preaches about something in your life. Well, you know, I'm not like them over there. And you read your Bible, and the Lord speaks about something you're doing wrong. Oh, Lord God, you know, that was back in the Old Testament, you know. That wasn't me today. Now you're wavering. And you're going to slide. But when God says, hey, listen, this is your problem. God, can you help me? God, I, I, I repent of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, Lord, I know I'm doing it. <laughs> Paul says, yeah, those things that I don't do, I do. <laughs> That I'm supposed to do, I don't do. And look what he says in verse 2. Examine me. And this picture's of patience in the doctor. Judge me, Lord. He's sitting down in the doctor's office. Well, doc, you know, I got this pain in my arm. What do you think it is? I'll judge by what I see. Maybe you got something wrong with your tendonitis, or maybe something with your bones, or, well, doctor. Yes, examine me. Look at me. Lord God, get the word of God and show me the word of God where I'm wrong. <coughs> that takes it a step further. Why am I doing it wrong? Show me, O oh Lord, and prove me. Show me how often I do it wrong. Show me how often I do it right. Try my reins. Use that for a horse and my heart. And Paul said again, he says, that which I'm supposed to do, I don't do. And that what I, I, I'm not supposed to do, that I'm doing. And that's just God saying, okay, Paul, here it is. No, not doing it. Then that thing comes up later on in life. And you fall for it. I'm such a good Christian. No, you fell for it again. I do that. I've got that one sin in my life and, and, and this morning and like, Lord God, I, I'm sorry. And I started making excuses. And then I, I, I apologize for the excuse and I say, well, Lord, not making excuses, but Lord God, I failed. Help me. And we failed. David failed. A man in the Old Testament is surely saved as much as a Christian is saved of all the people in the Old Testament. And, well, David sinned. And then people say, oh, look at David. He committed adultery. Really? Yeah, he did. But look how bad. The adultery. The sin of adultery. Didn't Jesus say, so whoever looked upon a woman and lusts after his heart has committed adultery with her? You mean to tell me you've never looked at a woman? To, ha -ha? Oh. Uh-huh. Huh, you never thought about somebody just so angry with them? Well, yeah. The New Testament says if you're angry. The Old Testament says if you're angry with them, you're committing a, a murder. Oh. Well, don't go be yanking on David. And you got people you hate. Say, Lord, judge me. Lord, examine me. Try me. Show me. Sometimes I know I'm doing it, Lord. Okay. Oh, sometimes I do it. I didn't even know I was going to do it. For thy loving kindness is before my eyes. Loving kindness. The God that loves us, we love him because he first loved us. God loves us enough to say, listen, this is your trouble. A father would come up to his son and say, son, I heard this report about you. You ought not to be doing this. 
son, I seen you doing this. Daughter, I seen you ought not be doing. And that's the love of the father. They don't. You know, when when a when a child comes to his father, and says, you know, he's married, he's his father, you know, you know that that big fancy sports car. Oh yeah, I finally got the raise, I finally saved up enough money, I'm gonna get me that sports car and the father will be like, but son, in loving, you're married, aren't you? Yeah, I'm married. You just got you know, you're young married, yeah. Well, don't you think that maybe you're gonna have children? I don't know. Well, if you're gonna have children, where are you gonna put the children in that two seater sports car? Oh, yeah. And the Father's loving kindness and judging and examining us. I'm not pleased with what you're doing. I want to reward you. I want to give you all mercy, blessings, and grace. I want to, when, when you get to glory, I don't want you to have wood, hay, and stubble. I love you enough. Don't do that. Or when you do something right, wow, I just love you doing that. I'm going to keep on help, helping you do that. Keep on doing it. You know, when a father loves his child, and they say, like, you know, the child is in a baseball game, and that kid hits the ball and goes all the way out in the outfield, and that kid's running, that father's, yay, go, 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 I love you. And the child, you know, he hits the ball, and, you know, it's caught, the game's over, ninth inning, and the team loses. Father puts his arms around and says, well, maybe do better next time. I love you. I'm not going to abandon you. A father say, oh, you lost the game. How terrible you are. That's not a loving kindness. Well, the loving father say, yeah, you lost a game. Oh, well, it's only a game. Let's go get an ice cream. You know? God looks at us. You're a sinner. That's who you are. You're going to sin. Okay, that time you wanted to do it. You should not. That time you were caught off guard. But I was trying. I was showing you. You think you were so great. You think you're so wonderful. Then how come you got caught doing it again? Oh, I'm doing it because I love you. I walked in thy truth. And for the Christian on this side of Calvary, the truth is Jesus says, I am the truth. Sanctify through, through, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Walking in the word. David's walking in the words that he has, and he has the Old Testament. He has the law. And he failed. He failed with Bathsheba, and he failed with Uriah. And we failed. We're sinners. I have not sat with the vain person. People of no value. People who will do David and his life. No, no, give David with, with God no advantage of God at all. They won't give any worthiness to God and to the David. Matter of fact, they would set David back. I'm not going to sit with him. I'm not going to be with him at all. Neither will I go with the disassemblers, and that's people who are hypocrites or falseness. They liars. I'm not going to sit with people who are going to sit in church and, and break the left side of pews to the right side of pews. I'm not going to sit with the people who want the red carpet or the blue carpet. Or I'm not going to sit with the people who, you know, who want to go and start another church to take the church that they're in. I'm not going to do that. Solomon's son is going to disassemble the nation of Israel. And he's going to break the nation of Israel to North Israel and South Israel. Israel and Judah that is still broken to this day. There have been church splits because somebody disassembled. Now I think probably if you're going to have a church, I think you should go up to the pastor and say, you know, I'm going to sit out, go forth in church, or <coughs> you go quietly and leave the church. You go sit up in church you believe God's starting. You do not get anybody involved in your church that you were in. If you get people in the church and you go start off the church without the pastor knowing or even without the pastor disagreeing, then you disassemble. Now, I tried to start a church. pastor got upset, but I didn't try to set anybody in his church. I told my wife, we're not, at, not nobody in that church is going to be what God sets forth before us. I have hated the congregation of evildoers. So do you hate 
churches today that go against the word of God or do you represent them or do you think, oh, they're okay, they got their religion? What do you think? I mean, evildoers, they worship Estar or Easter. That's evil doing. Oh, you know, uh, we have a woman preacher. That defiles the scriptures. That's evil. Are you for it or are you against it? There's a church that says they literally eat the body of Jesus and drink literally his blood. I'm against it. And I have told people with funerals and weddings, I am not going to that church because that church is against the Bible. I will not set foot in that church. I wouldn't do, well, again, what's the Bible said? I hated the congregation. Hate it. Hate it. Hate it. That's a mean, nasty word today. The Bible says you're to hate sin. I hate the Catholic Church, but I don't hate Catholics. The Catholic Church has sent my family into hell. There are people in my family who are devout, true Catholics. I believe they're in hell today. There are Catholics in my family. I don't know where they are today. I don't know if they're in heaven. If they have that sense of the Bible to believe what the Bible said. Or are they set forth in hell because they twisted to the church. I don't hate Catholics. I hate the church and their teachings. I will not sit with wicked people or with the wicked. Now take that wicked in in the tribulation period. There are going to be people who are going to sit with that antichrist. David says no. But the, as far as what David saying right now, the wicked person, I'm not going to sit with them. A Christian has no business anywhere in politics because politics is followed by wickedness. Politicians are known for, well, I'm going to stand for the truth. Yeah, they'll step on you. And you'll go to the lowest common denominator, which means you may be high on the ball with God. In the end, you'll be a low ball. You'll be with the skull. You may have a brand new car, brand new car. And you go hang around with the mud. You go hang out where, where, it's, where it's filthy. That car is going to get filthy. I will wash my hands in innocency. That's what Pilate tried to do. David saying, I got clean hands. Later on, David not knowing Ezekiel, Ezekiel is going to say, listen, if you tell people about the judgment of God coming, you tell them what God expects them to do to get right. He says, listen, you won't have blood in your fingertips. But he said, listen, if you don't tell them, I'm going to be a nice person. I'm going to be a friendly person. I'm going to be a family person. And I'm not going to destruct them. I'm not going to offend them. I'm just going to keep the Bible and Jesus quiet. Then your hands are filthy. Of blood. I'm going to assume by that statement what the Bible statements are. I think David told people about his God, Jesus. You know, he had Gentiles in his army that worshiped God. So will I compass and circle. That's what compass means. You know, you get the compass, it tells you to go north, east, south, 360 degrees. Thy altar, O Lord. That's a brazen altar. David says, I'm going to walk up to that brazen altar. I'm going in that courtyard. At one point, they would go to the, they would tie the animal to the horns of that brazen altar, and they would lay their hands on that animal, and they would kill. David said, "There, I am going to be doing that, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving, rejoice evermore." Paul says, "I'm going to publish. I'm going to put out and tell of all thy wondrous works." And maybe even publish in the Old Testament. Maybe it's to publish what we think today. I'm going to put it in print. I'm going to put it in writing. I'm going to let people get it. I'm going to stand for the thanksgiving of God. And all the great things God has done. You see, well, how do you know that David did that? How many Psalms are we reading or going to study about that are about David publishing the Holy Spirit? Say, here it is, Psalms 26. Here it is, Psalms 27. Here's Psalms 25. Here's Psalms 28. All about David telling of great things of God.
Lord, I love thy habitation of thy house. There's the tabernacle, the temple. Right now for David, it's the curtains. Oh, Lord, I looked out my windows. I see that I dwell in cedar. I dwell in magnificence. And you dwell out there in a house of tents. But I love that place. Why do I love that place? Because you're in the middle of the most holy place there. In the place where thy honor dwelleth. The most holy place. The place that only was entered in once a year, twice, by the high priest and only the high priest. David never been in that place. I got Luke 16, 13. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what that is. I don't know. I got it written down here sometimes. Sometimes my notes are good. Sometimes my notes are not so good. But let's take a look. Luke 16. Gospel Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant, David was a servant, can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one or love the other. Or else will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So David says, listen, I love thy house. David does not love the bar room. David says, I love where you dwell, God. I'm not going to play, I'm not going to show up in the place of boredom or whorehouse. David says, I love where, where, the, where the tabernacle is. I'm not going to show up with the tabernacle of evildoers. I love the church. Amen, do you? Where, you? where are you the rest of the week? Are you places where you shouldn't be? Gather not my soul, that eternal being, with sinners. Now, we're all sinners. But that sinners is like, like the Pharisees sinners with Jesus. There. Jesus is dealt with the sin ill those people. And David, when the sinners here is, you know what? There are people, they're just wicked, vile. They don't want to do anything about God. They don't want to have anything to do with God. They don't want to learn anything of the law. They are sinning and they love to sin. And David says, I don't want anything to do with them. Now, when we go out in public, in public, we witness. We are out with sinners. We are witnessing the sinners, but we're not joining them. And we would love to have one that come out of the congregation of wickedness and come to the Lord. But listen, when I go down to the farmer's market and I preach Saturday, I ain't going to afterwards, I'm not going to go stand or sit with a congregation and having a beer. I'm not going to go sit and have a cigarette with them. I'm not going to go talk about the ball games with them. I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to tell them how to get saved. And I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go home. And then I'm going to go to the church house on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. I'm going to spend time with my family because we're saved and we love the Lord. I don't want anything to do with them outside of serving the Lord. I'll go tell them about Jesus. If they don't want to have anything to do with Jesus, they don't want anything to do about the Bible, I don't want anything to do with you. You come up to me, say, I'm a Christian. You see my tattoo? Look, I, I don't want anything to do with you. You come up to me and show me a medallion of Jesus on the cross. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with that cross. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with Jesus on the cross. I'm going to tell you, first of all, he resurrected from the grave. That's still your belief. Okay, I don't want anything to do with you. You're a sinner. I'm not going to enter into a church that are sinners who are unwashed and don't want to be washed. And they want to love their sin. Nor my life with bloody men, murderers. David, you're going to murder yourself. I wish there were dates on these psalms. Where... Bloody men. Listen, David was a military man. David took down Goliath. Don't you think when that rock hit Goliath in the head, there was blood? So there must be a difference between thou shalt not kill and war battle, if, unless you're a Jehovah Witness. When God told Israel, go in there and wipe them all out. All of them. David's talking about men. I don't want to be with men who purposely and designed to go and kill others for whatever reason. Murder. Nor my life with bloody men. Did not he have a fellowship with Jonathan? That he said, oh, I love Jonathan beyond the love of women. Didn't, jo didn't uh, 
Jonathan, didn't he kill anybody? Yes, he did. I guarantee he did. Because he fought wars. Now, either David's a hypocrite or a wartime battle has a complete difference between murder value. David would have nothing to do with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes that put Jesus Christ to death. David would have been a Peter. In whose hands the murderers is mischief. Not holding this, mischief. And in their right hand, we're supposed to be Jesus Christ. Is full of bribes, chapter, uh, verse 10, they are not innocent. Look at verse 6 again. I will wash my hands in innocency. Verse 10, they are not innocent. And David's like, I have nothing to do with them. You know what Pilate should have done? She went, oh, I washed my hands the whole matter. <laughs> Pilate said, Jesus? Yeah. I believe you're innocent. Okay. I believe they're guilty. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. You and I go have a little walk and a little talk together. I ain't going to crucify you. You imagine if Pilate stood up and said, I believe that this is the king of the Jews. I believe he's Jesus. I believe he's the son of God. And Jesus, you tell me what I need to do to get right with God. That would have changed history. And Pilate said, oh, I washed my hands. That was it. Jesus said, you know, about truth. And Pilate goes, what is truth? And that was it. Jesus never answered him anymore. All Pilate tried to do was get rid of Jesus. Try to bug him off from somebody else. Oh, you're in Herod's area? Herod, you want to take care of him for me? Oh, shoot, thank you. Oh, that was, oh you're back? Oh, come on. Really? Jesus was a nuisance to Pilate. I'll tell you what, I'll beat him, and you guys will be happy, and we'll all go home. That's not good enough? What's the only thing good if I can get rid of you guys and get rid of him? Crucify him? All right, take him. But as for me, David, he's been talking about sinners. Nine and ten. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity, in God's integrity. Redeem me, buy me, Lord. Purchase me. And be merciful to me. Oh, Lord God, I need your mercy. I'm a saved, born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I need mercy. You know, okay, I, I'm not ever going to hell. But what if God said, okay, you know what? You're still a sinner, and I'm going to get you for every... I am going to... Ooh, I'm going to pour out all the wrath because of your sin. No. It's not going to happen. Mercy. I... John said... He that has not the sun shall not see, shall not see life, but the, the but the wrath of God. You know what the worst thing God will do to me as a saved child of God. He's not going to pour wrath out on me because I sin. He's going to say, you know what? I'm going to discipline you. I'm going to chastise you. That's a lot different from wrath. Now I'm angry with you, but I'm going to try to teach you a lesson. Redeem me before merciful, and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in even place. That's a good place to stand. You're not going to fall. You're not going backwards. You don't have to climb. And in the congregations, well, look at verse 5. I hate the congregation of the evildoers. And in the congregations will I bless the Lord. So there's a wicked congregation, and there's a congregation that blesses and makes God happy. And you need to step back in your church or whatever you call you're going to. And you got to say, does this line up with the Bible? Is it correct with God or is it correct with mammon? Who am I going to love? If it lines up with God and God is through it. Listen, we all, every church sins. Every church has got problems. Every Christian has got problems. But there are congregations out there that are just wicked and vile against the word of God. Don't love them. Hate them. And that's the church. You got a good church. It loves the Lord. It wants to do it. It's got some problems. You love them. That's where the Lord is. And bless. Make happy. Make God happy. 
How do you make God happy? By doing right. Plain and simple.